everybody. Welcome back to the backyard. Glad you're here. Today we're going to be playing chess in time lapse. <laughs> oh, all right. We'll stay tuned for that there at the end. Uh, and we're, we're also going to get into some details about that thing. Um, we've had some requests for, uh, we have some questions um, to answer some questions about how to build some sturdy stuff. But um, the first things that you can do to your backyard have nothing to do with spending lots of money or building big things. Um, it's really thinking about what you can do right away for free. And some of it might just be bringing things outside that you do inside. Well, like chess. Like chess, for instance. Um, but also thinking about just having some free stuff like cardboard boxes. What if you brought some cardboard boxes? Chalk. Can you, can you tell? People have been chalking. Uh, what are some other simple ideas that people can do in their backyards that don't cost a lot of money? You can just bring shovels and make giant holes in the ground. Shovels. Giant holes in the ground. Yeah. In fact, why don't you dig a big hole in your backyard and send us pictures? Hey. Howdy from a nice spring snow, snowy day. <laughs> How demoralizing. No, no, no. Okay, um, I gotta be quick here because I, I have a lot to cover. Um, after the last couple shows, um, people are asking, had some questions. So one question was construction. How do you build stuff like this that is gonna be strong enough for kids' safety? Um, how can you build something at home that's gonna withstand kids? Um, so, I'm serious about this. I got a clipboard, so I'm going to go through some, a few pointers, okay? Um, so this thing behind me um, was built, I uh, collaborated with a great friend of mine, Bob Williams, an incredible builder. Um, I basically said, hey, this is kind of what I'm looking for. This is kind of what we want to do. So he found some pictures online, and then and then he whipped it together. Man's a genius. Um, and he did incredible things. But so the first thing that you want to think about when you're building for your outdoors is build beefy. Build it strong. Overbuild. Build it super strong. Imagine that you're building it for uh, chimpanzees in the zoo or something. Um, there's a safety factor. You want to build it uh, to protect for kids. You want to make it safe for kids. But you also need to build beefy um, to protect it from kids, right? Make it safe from kids. So you want it safe for kids, but also safe from kids. So that means you build like massive be beefy, beefily. That's a word. Uh, okay, so like these posts, all these posts, super strong, everything's super strong um, to withstand stuff. And so even when you look at these posts, in the ground there, um, they're four feet in the ground. So you sink all these posts, and that's kind of standard with playground equipment. You sink it to the frost line. So wherever that is, where you live, maybe you live in a place where there, there is no frost, lucky you. But here in the north, where it snows in May, um, we have to sink down four feet. So all those posts go down four feet is it keeps it from moving you know in, in a freeze thaw but it also makes it super strong so it's in place solid just to start with um, next thing is you can use some standard construction methods so like the deck here is uh, that is some just regular boards I actually got these free online in Ithaca somebody was giving away some part of their deck so I nabbed them so boards there up top that's some standard just roofing, uh, you know, joists and everything, construction. I used black locust. Bob and I used black locust here. Um, so all those cool posts are black locust, which is a great wood, a rot-resistant wood, naturally rot-resistant, and that's what I like to use. Um, you can use pressure-treated wood, you know, but... It's got stuff like arsenic in it and bromium, chromium, that kind of stuff, which 
makes wood, which is a natural thing, unnatural, keeps it from rotting, which is good for the outdoors, but it's got that stuff in it. Anyway, if you're touching it, if your kids are touching it, well, um, might be better to try and find stuff that's naturally rot resistant. So you could uh, check with wood people in your area. Where I live, black locust is really good. Um, let's see. Next on the standard construction, flexible. You want to be flexible. Watch how the thing's being used. So, see this beam out here. Bob didn't put that beam on, but I put that on for, for our tire swing, right? So, that was great. But then the beam, which is a beefy black locust again, just every time he used it, you know, I thought it was just put a nice little, little tire swing out here for gentle play. But you saw what JJ does with the airboardings. It's crazy. But that beam was just fluctuating which was okay but uh, i added this extra right here just to kind of cut down on that so you're always always kind of watching and uh adding extra stuff if you need to now also look at the hardware again when i said like you want the wood to be super beefy you also want that hardware to be get the biggest stuff possible especially like this if it's for a moving part because it gets a lot of wear and tear uh, we changed out the uh, the rope recently, and when I got up there on a ladder, I saw the original hardware, which is this. Look at this. He had worn it down. It was like this, and I mean, that is close. So, there it comes with safety. You want to keep an eye on that stuff. So, you still want to do, you know, I'm about risk, but I'm also about safety, right? Don't want any bad accidents to happen. So, uh that stuff so and then get the beefiest stuff you can find so that's pretty big and beefy i had a playground safety inspector uh email me about regulations guidelines do i follow any of that stuff of course i do when i'm designed for commercial applications or schools or child care centers and that stuff for your own backyard common sense do common sense but there there are still some rules of thumb with safety um that you can follow and so like ground surfacing that's a, that's one here so we have wood chips down there um but it's a little it's a little light right here uh, you know i have on my list of things to do is get a little more in there um with regular playground safety you put it out six feet but here's something that i did that you wouldn't do at a regular playground is i just did it right to the fence so that this fence now can be used for part of play. So the guys climb up there and then they climb up onto the structure and all that. Um, typically you'd have to keep six feet away, but we have a small yard, so we're kind of making use of the space. Uh, this is kind of interesting to have these, these stumps, like another way to get in. Um, but if you look at the stumps, they're starting to rot a little bit. So, you know, keep an eye on that kind of stuff. Protrusions are another thing. So you don't want like bolts and stuff sticking out. So you always either use these kind of round head kinds of things or you just make sure that everything is sunk deep in there where you're not going to catch some flesh on a protruding screw. What else? Head entrapment space. You want spaces that aren't too small that you could, your body could go in but your head could get stuck. Yeah, that's a little iffy. But again, kind of common sense. Um, protective barriers. I'm going down the list here. So there's, we have a wall there. When you have an elevated surface, you have a wall, a wall, a wall. But then I kept it open. Um, American, North American guidelines don't really like this because, you know, you can fall off this elevated surface. But it's how they do it in Europe. I like this. For my guys, it's okay. And neighbor kids. Um, but toddlers you got toddlers up there you want to watch that uh, let's see anything else um fall material close to the fence barriers materials head entrapments cpsc yeah yeah you could look up consumer product safety commission playground safety guidelines but i'm telling you just build it beefy build it big build it strong um, and get a builder to help you if you're really going to tackle something like this. Now, my, my style of building is like this kind of thing. This was to protect an 
apple tree from the airboarding. Um, you know, so just cobbing it together. Look at that, whap, 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 and then you can keep building it. So it's a combo of like super strong stuff and then stuff that you can just kind of keep adding to. Check out these books. This is some of my, some stuff that I got years and years ago and these great books that just can really show some neat ways of building some constructions. It's by uh, this husband wife team, David and Jenny Steels, Styles, and it is super cool stuff here. Shows you how to build stuff. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, that, that's how we could have done the beams on two bicycles. So, super cool. Um, I know that was quick, right? A little overview. Overview of like, build it beefy, build it strong, right? Protect it, make it safe for kids, make it safe from kids. And then just being flexible and change it and watch what happens and add more wood or reinforce it as necessary. Now for the cartoon part of our show. All right, here's a design I did for an orphanage in China years ago. It says here July 2002. Um, but I picked this one because it's kind of a backyard scale design and space. So maybe it'll give you some ideas for your backyard. Uh, let's take a little tour here. We'll follow the stepping stone trail. But I mean, if you look at it, it's kind of like hills around the outside and trees for shade. And then just a fun, a few fun, um, you know, little details here and there. Great big sand area. So let's look. Follow the stepping stones. Stepping stones on a hill. Oh, look, there's a nice bench. Look at that wind chimes under that tree. Little playhouse in the sand. It's always nice to have playhouses in the sand because kids are going to want to bring sand to the playhouse. So, might as well just put the playhouse in the sand. Boulders, more stepping stones around the outside, and a trail around the whole outside. So, you could go around the entire play space without touching the ground or the hot lava, or the shark infested waters. Of course, there's a nice big hill slide. Trail goes around, nice shady area with a picnic, raised planter, trail goes around back to the beginning. Um, then there's this white area is kind of a big stairway, but tucked in a little nook, this little spot here with some benches and some bushes. And so you might want to think about, well, what are just some little nooks that you could make fun little hiding places for your kids? Mm -hmm. to play in the, in creek. the creek in a creek y'all So I hope some of this helps for uh, thinking about your own backyard and what you could do out there. And remember, it doesn't have to cost a lot of money, doesn't have to be complex. If you build, what is it, build beefy. <clears throat> but 
it's just as good to put free stuff out here get your loose parts out here get your cardboard boxes just saying yes to play that's the important thing um, and then you never know where your your next project idea might come from um, Levi a little guy last week uh, or so asked if he wanted a stage he wanted me to build a stage out here in this little yard okay all right so I got to thinking and okay I actually have some wood and we got a little spot he's little right so it doesn't need that big of a stage so check this out <clears throat> right here would be good so I thought this this little spot here it's kind of a dead space we don't really use it I have a planter in there but uh, that can come out and we can build a little stage so stay tuned for that and uh, yeah we'll keep track of how that project goes and I want to hear how your projects are going so send me an email um, send pictures um, especially of the whole digging challenge yeah shovel plus location plus kids plus adults saying yes those good holes so send, send me some hole pictures all right see ya I've got skin like peaches I've got skin like cream I look so sweet that I think I'm gonna scream. Oh, that skin is so thin, just a bag I live in. And if skin's all you see, then you ain't seeing me. You've got to dig in the dirt, be ready to go get hurt when the dragon's roaring and your life's really storming that's the time to make a stand you gotta shout out your life is grand so long mom so long dad and hello world <laughs>